Hey, good morning, Calvary. Thanks for joining us for today's service. If you got a Bible, 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 is where I want you to turn today. We're talking about encouragement. And on that theme, I wanted to bring you out here to the Walker Track and Field Complex. Uh, as a dad who raised three kids who ran track, I spent a lot of hours here watching kids run in circles. Uh, long jump, triple jump, high jump, pole vault. Uh, many spring evenings were spent right here watching our teams compete against others. Now, um, I'll tell you what, today doesn't feel a lot like a track and field day. It's about 40 degrees with a cold wind off the lake. A few days ago, the field was covered with snow. Uh, these are the kind of track seasons that start out with kids uh, practicing indoors and the coaches just try and encourage them to stick with it, even though meets are getting canceled and going outdoors is cold. Well, uh, when you are at a sports event, there are times when you literally get to see the impact of encouragement on an athlete that comes running right by you. So if you've been to many track meets, here's a situation that you've probably seen many times before. A long distance race, maybe a half mile, a mile, or a two mile event. Athletes are running around and around and around the track multiple times, fighting the wind, fighting fatigue. And you can literally watch them as the race progresses, slow down, their heads sink, and they really struggle as they go around the far ends of the, of the uh, track. But then something happens special. When they come past the grandstand, their family's here, their friends are here, their coach, their teammates, and everybody's cheering for them. Everybody's shouting out words of encouragement. And you can literally see the impact of those words on that student's performance because all of a sudden those arms start pumping a little harder, the legs start kicking a little higher, and the heads are up a little straighter as they're energized and empowered by the encouragement that's coming from others around them. Well, folks, um, the Christian life is kind of like running a really long marathon. And there are times when we all get worn out and there are times when we all run through seasons of, tr of trouble. And that's what uh, 1 Thessalonians is talking a lot about, about believers who are facing troubles and need the encouragement that comes from God through other believers. Because I guarantee you what, there's going to be times when you need to have encouragement from others, but there are also going to be times when God is going to use you to be the voice of encouragement in somebody else's life. So let's go back to Calvary, open up to 1 Thessalonians 3, and see what God's Word has to say today. Okay, folks, we're in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. And again, our uh, series today is called Overcoming Faith. And uh, encouragement is our topic for today. Paul is writing a letter to these new believers in the town of Thessalonica. He's been um, driven out of there by persecution. And these are words of encouragement that he is writing to build up their faith. And in the process... Paul's own faith gets encouraged as well. 1 Thessalonians 3. Uh, finally, when we could stand it no longer, we decided to stay alone in Athens, and we sent Timothy to visit you. He's our brother and God's co-worker in proclaiming the good news of Christ. We sent him to strengthen you, to encourage you in your faith, and to keep you from being shaken by the troubles you are going through. But you know that we are destined for such troubles. Even while we were with you, we warned you that troubles would soon come, as they did, as you well know. That's why when I could bear it no longer, I sent Timothy to find out whether your faith was still strong. I was afraid that the tempter had gotten the best of you and that our work had been useless. But now Timothy has just returned, bringing us good news about your faith and love. He reports that you always remember our visit with joy and that you want to see us as much as we want to see you. So we have been greatly encouraged in the midst of our troubles and suffering, dear brothers and sisters, because you have remained strong in your faith. It gives us new life to know that you're standing firm in the Lord. Let's pray. Father in heaven, these are days when uh, we as your church desperately need the encouragement that comes from the Holy Spirit and that comes from one another. Uh, it's been a long, difficult year with all things related to the pandemic. And in light of the events in Minnesota this last week of another tragic shooting and all the civil unrest and nights of turmoil, uh, Lord, it is easy for us to feel discouraged, 
fatigued, uh, worn out. And yet, Lord, the demands of life don't stop. Our families still need loved and cared for. Our businesses and work is still in front of us every day. Uh, the needs of the church never take a break. Lord God, we <laughs> need you <coughs> to renew us today by your Holy Spirit. And we need you to speak to us from your word. We need you to help us know how to minister to each other in encouragement. And Lord, we lift up to you our state. Uh, we pray for our civic leaders, for governor, for mayors, for city council. Lord, we pray for all those in law enforcement, whether they be in administration or those who are out on the streets. Lord, we pray for families that are hurting, for people who are in pain and heartache and turmoil. As again, uh, Minnesota suffers another terrible tragedy, Lord. We pray that in these turbulent times, your Holy Spirit would give us perspective and a sense of peace amidst the trouble. And Lord, a word of encouragement for those who need to hear it from us. We pray all this in Jesus' name today. Amen. Uh, so folks, I want to tell you what you already know. People need encouragement. And man, they especially need it in a year like this and in a week like this that we have had. And what I want you to hear today is that God can use you to be a voice of encouragement into the life of another believer. And as you step into that and respond to the Holy Spirit's leading, you may well find that the encouragement that you seek to give to another believer ends up rebounding back to you and strengthening your faith. That's exactly what happened to Paul and Timothy and these believers in Thessalonica. They had established it as a young church. They had not been able to stay very long because of persecution from the synagogue leaders and the city officials. They'd been chased out of the city. They'd gone on to the next city. They hadn't been able to stay there either. And now they're 300 miles away in the city of Athens. And Paul is kind of torn up inside in worry about how these young believers are doing in light of the persecution. Uh, some of them are facing hostility from family members or from neighbors or from employers or maybe from the synagogue that they used to attend or, or from the response of the city officials. Uh, some of them had been put in jail and treated terribly. Um, <coughs> if people think that trusting Christ means the problems of life go away, man, they do not get that from the Apostle Paul. Uh, this chapter is all about being encouraged in the middle of troubles that you're persevering through. <coughs> in Thessalonians here, it's not about going around problems. It's about God bringing you through problems. So in verse 3, he says it's troubles that we were destined for as followers of Jesus Christ. In verse 4, he says it's troubles that we warned you about. Hey, we knew this was going to be coming and we didn't hide it from you. In verse 7, it's not just these new believers that are facing troubles, but Paul has his own down in Athens. So it's not a matter of um, they're in trouble because they're sinning. It's not a matter of disobedience or immaturity. Uh, these are troubles rooted in persecution because of their commitment to Jesus Christ. Now, you know, troubles come in many forms. And for many of us, the troubles that we face in life may be very different from persecution, but that doesn't mean that they don't present a challenge to our faith and an opportunity to minister and love to one another. Uh, there are people who come into church every week facing all kinds of troubles. Uh, for some of them, it will be financial. Uh, for some, it will be marital or relationships with their uh, kids or their siblings. For some, it might be work-related trouble. For others, it's physical and mental health issues. The list goes on. What I want you to know is that when you come to church, you see people often at their Sunday best, smiling, saying things are fine. And what you need to know is that you don't know that person's real story until there's been an investment of time and an honesty and relationship where you and they are able to have real conversation about the real struggles of life. And frequently that is not going to happen on a Sunday morning in a congregational worship service, but it happens in those private moments between friends, small groups, in a prayer group, uh, people hanging out after a, a time of ministry in a committee or a 
uh, some other ministry program that they're doing side by side. And they're just sharing life and they're sharing what's really going on in their heart. Folks, those are going to present you with opportunities to be that word of encouragement, that person of encouragement that the Holy Spirit will use to speak into somebody else's faith as they go through trouble. And again, I want to encourage you not to think of this as just something for clergy or for people who have a lot of experience because the Holy Spirit may present you right now with people who you know need a word of encouragement in light of everything that's going on in the world and the things that in particular are going on in somebody's life. Um, so when I look on this past week in the news, uh, for me, I just feel like our whole state of Minnesota is troubled this week. Uh, we're trying to get through and beyond this pandemic, and so many days it feels like it's three steps forward, two steps back. Um, then last weekend, another tragic death, and uh, one family in mourning, and an officer in custody, and and just a city in upheaval down in Brooklyn Center, and nights of looting and confrontation. And it just feels like we can't get a break in the midst of everything that's been going on. It's just wave after wave of trouble and heartache and pain and anger and anxiety. Um, so the question is, in times like these, are you attuned to the Holy Spirit so that you're ready to be a voice of encouragement? Because I will tell you, people need it, no matter what their age is, whether they're a new believer, whether they're a veteran believer, men, women, young and old, people need encouragement. So today I want to talk to you about five different uh, ways that you can take a step to be used of God to encourage someone else's faith. Um, this is what happened with Paul and Timothy as they were reaching back to these uh, believers whose faith they had planted earlier. And it, in turn, that encouragement that they gave to the Thessalonians, in the goodness of God, it came back to encourage Paul and his team as well. So number uh, one, first step. Um, if you're going to be an encourager, you have to be willing to reach out and initiate contact. And Paul did that proactively by sending Timothy 300 miles back to go back to Thessalonica. And that was a big sacrifice for Paul. He didn't know hardly anybody in Athens. Timothy was like his right-hand man. Uh, he was a co-worker in the gospel. He was a brother in the Lord. In the book of Philippians, Paul talks about Timothy as being like a son to him. So for him to make that journey back, invest more time in Thessalonica, and finally make the return journey, uh, would mean a separation of probably many weeks with an uncertain outcome. Paul didn't know what he would find out from Thessalonica, and he didn't know how it would turn out for Timothy. There was still a possibility that he could get in trouble with the law and be arrested. But folks, <clears throat> Paul knew that that church needed encouragement, and Paul knew that he needed to hear how, he, how they were doing. So he initiated, he reached out, even at sacrifice. And if you want to be used of the Lord, you need to let the Lord know that you are open and you are ready to being led by Him. And when you see a need, when you know a man or woman, a friend or a coworker who is in need of encouragement, <clears throat> that you are open to being led by the Holy Spirit to make that first contact, to send that text message or that email or the phone call or the card, whatever it is, you will begin to move into a ministry of encouragement when you're ready to step forward, reach out, and initiate rather than wait for the other person to come to you. Second uh, step of encouragement is words of affirmation and truth. <coughs> and the whole letter of Paul here has been full of affirmation for these believers. Uh, he has talked about uh, Paul's joy in their faith and in their hope and in their love and how it's working itself out in ministry. He's affirmed God's love for them and what Christ did for them in dying for their sins and rising from the dead and, and promising to come again one day. Paul is affirming his own care and the care of his team for these believers, letting them know that they are loved, that their ministry was not just a fly-by-night operation, that it may not have been long-term, but it was sincere and genuine and only broken by the fire of persecution. 
No, it's words of affirmation and words of truth. And this is important because Paul says that he knew that these troubles would come on these believers. He says um, that these are, verse 3, troubles that you're going through, but you know that we're destined for such troubles. Even while we were with you, we warned you that troubles would soon come, and they did as you know. Um, there is no advantage in sugarcoating problems. There is no advantage to anyone of making light of issues that are going to be long-term, that may be exceedingly difficult and challenging. And Paul had the ability both to affirm the goodness of the gospel and God's love for them and their real and genuine faith, and yet at the same time not diminish at all the reality of the hardships that they were going through. Folks, it means a lot to people when you are able to acknowledge the reality of the challenges that they're going through. When you don't dismiss them, you don't treat them lightly, uh, you, you don't act as if, um, hey, you know, just a little more faith and these problems just go away. When you affirm your love for someone and you affirm God's love for them, you also affirm the reality and the truth of the hardship that they're facing. A third step of uh, encouraging other people, compassionate listening. Uh, being able to give your time and heart to another person in a way that they know that they can open up to you and share the truth in confidentiality uh, without being scolded, without feeling like you they've become your project and you're there to fix them. Uh, it is enormously encouraging for people just to have the opportunity to unload what's going on in their spirit. So Paul needed to hear from these folks how they were really doing. And when Timothy went back, he had a message. Oh yeah, he told them about Jesus Christ and the love of the Father and the power of the Spirit. And no doubt he spoke to again of what Christ did for them on the cross and the resurrection and the return of Christ. And Timothy would have affirmed again their love for them. But Timothy also brought with him two good ears who would have heard a lot of stories of what people were enduring as they faced persecution because of their commitment to Jesus Christ. They would have heard stories from the workplace. They would have heard what city officials were saying about them. They would have heard about people's family troubles on account of their faith in Christ. Timothy gathered up all these stories, listening to these people because Paul wanted to know the truth. How are they really doing? And folks, people will soon discern from you and I if what we really want to know is the truth or whether we want them to keep up appearances and wear a mask that says, hey, truth may be painful, I'm not interested. No, Paul understood that life could be painful, but he wanted to know the reality of their situation. Many years ago, there was a teenager named Larry who grew up in a small church. And uh, in that church, it was expected that, you know, when you reach a certain age, you're kind of supposed to pray in public. And for Larry, that was a very scary thought because he had a terrible stuttering problem, made him feel like a fool when he tried to speak in public. But one day during communion at church, he got up the nerve to try and pray. And the longer he prayed, the worse it got. The words came out garbled. His mind got confused. Pretty soon he was uh, thanking the Father for dying on the cross and telling Jesus, thank you for getting the Holy Spirit out of the tomb. And it was just one of those prayers where the longer he went, the more frustrated and confused his whole words came out. Well, by the time it was done, not only did he feel like a fool and a failure, but he was sure he would never pray in public again. And he was ready to make a beeline for the church door. Well, there was an elderly man in that little church service who heard every word of his stuttering prayer and made a point to catch him before he left the building. And he looked at him and he said, Larry, I just want you to know that whatever you do for the Lord, I'm behind you 1,000%. Well, that young man's name was Larry Crabb, and that was many years ago before he became a well-known Christian counselor, author, and yes, speaker who's impacted thousands of lives and blessed all kinds of people. In fact, he wrote a book called Encouragement, diving just into this issue. And Larry, as an older man, looked back at the words of that man as he was a young teenager, and this is what he said. Um, 
Those words spoke life to me. Those words had power and they reached deep into my being. Now for that elderly man, he probably had no idea of how significant that moment would be in Larry's life. But the Holy Spirit prompted him to reach out, to speak up, to give a word of affirmation, knowing full well what Larry's uh, situation was. And it became one of those life-changing moments that only God can orchestrate. So if you want to be a person of encouragement, be ready to reach out and take the initiative. Be ready to share affirmation of your love and God's love for this individual that also deals with the reality, the difficulty of their circumstances. Be a compassionate listener who's willing to give people time to unload what's really going on in life. Fourth step is sincere prayer. Uh, Thanksgiving and prayer is where this letter began in verse 2. We always thank God for you and pray for you constantly. And as we move on past verse 8 into verses 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, prayer is where Paul is going next. And that's where we're going to come back to next week. Folks, <clears throat> let me ask you a question. If you tell somebody that you're going to pray for them, do you? And do they know that? Uh, are you able to follow up with them with an honest answer that says, I've been praying for you. I've been praying for your family. I've been praying for this decision that you're going through. I've been praying for God's strength and encouragement for you. Folks, the Holy Spirit can use our words to be used of God to strengthen and build up somebody's faith. But when we stop talking to people and we start talking to God, then we're asking God to do not just what we're capable of, but what God himself is capable of. When we talk to God about people's needs in prayer, we understand that we cannot always be with them. We're not always there. We are not available 24-7, but the Lord God Almighty is. When we pray for people, we are trusting that there are times that we don't have the answer. We don't know what they should do. And yet we do believe that it is the Lord God who is able to guide them and influence their circumstances and guide their thoughts and decisions. So sincere prayer is absolutely critical if you want to have a ministry of encouragement during these very challenging times that we're all going through. Fifth step, uh, there is a time when sharing our struggles with other people actually has the benefit not of weighing somebody else down, but of encouraging them as they see how the Lord brought you through seasons of hardship. So look at verse 5 here. This is fascinating to me. Paul is, again, uh, uh, he's explaining why he had to send Timothy back. He says, when I could bear it no longer, I sent Timothy to find out whether your faith was still strong. I was afraid that the tempter had gotten the best of you and that our work had been useless. Now, that's the Apostle Paul speaking. Uh, that's the guy who said, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything and the peace of Christ will guard your, your heart and mind. Paul, when he uh, wrote those words, was inspired to the Holy, of the Holy Spirit, but he was writing them not only to us, he was writing them to himself. Those were words he needed to hear because he was not a superhero. He was a man of flesh and blood, a man of tremendous faith, but a man who also faced tremendous troubles and real anxiety and fear that perhaps the enemy, uh, the devil, had, had turned them away through the pressure of these uh, persecutions and maybe they had elected to, to find an easier route by renouncing their faith in Christ. <coughs> Paul was willing to share his anxiety and fear. He was willing to talk about the troubles that he had been through. That would have been encouragement to these new believers in the same way that their perseverance and their growing faith would be of encouragement to Paul when he heard it. So look at what he says here in verse 6. Now Timothy has just returned bringing us good news about your faith and love. He reports that you always remember our visit with joy and that you want to see us as much as we want to see you. So we have been greatly encouraged in the midst of our troubles and suffering, dear brothers and sisters, because you remain strong in the faith. It gives us new life to know that you are standing firm in the Lord. 
folks, um, it may seem counterintuitive, but there is a time and a place when sharing your own struggles, your own difficulties in your faith walk is going to be just the word, just the story, just the thing that God will use to bless and strengthen someone else. They will know that they are not alone in their troubles and they will see a living example of someone that God has brought through a season of hardship. So be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit because there will be a time and a place when your story, not just your great moments, but the difficulties will be the very thing that another believer needs to hear. As a pastor, I can't tell you how many times when I've been visiting someone or calling somebody and they're in a season of trial and I'm calling to try and encourage them, pray with them, share, share the word with them. And as I hear what God has done in their lives, I end up being the one who gets encouraged even as I had initially reached out to encourage them. Let me give you one example of this. Uh, Chris Spielman is a guy who is uh, a brother to the Minnesota Vikings general manager, Rick Spielman. As a young man, he had an amazing football career. First high school athlete ever on the cover of Wheaties Box. Two-time All-American at Ohio State. Three-time All-Pro for the Detroit Lions. All that uh, football fame kind of came to a screeching halt in 1998 when his wife Stephanie suffered a terrible return of breast cancer and he had to take the season off to care for her in her season of crisis but also to raise awareness and raise funds for um, breast cancer research. Uh, it was an amazing testimony of a man uh, in obedience to God choosing his family and his wife over a fame and career. Well, she recovered in 1999. He fully intended to return. He was excited to be with the Cleveland Browns and get his career back on track when he suffered a neck injury that impacted his spine and ended his career prematurely. When he went to tell his coach, Chris Palmer, that he wouldn't be able to fin finish the season, that he had to quit, Chris's words were, I'm sorry I let you down. The coach's reflection on those words later was this, let me down, you've got to be kidding. This guy is one of the most inspirational players in the league has ever seen. You see, Chris, in his time of weakness, felt that he had disappointed others. And yet the way that he had lived for the Lord and with his family through the season of trial had been an incredible example to others. In fact, Chris was quoted as telling his own kids this, uh, later on, he said, you don't crawl, walk, or jog to God. You run to God for peace and strength. Well, in 2009, uh, Stephanie finally lost her battle with cancer and went home to be with the Lord. Uh, her race complete, but Chris later remarried and is continuing on in his faith journey. And I'll tell you what, for a guy like him, it may be the football highlights that give him a big stage to speak on but it is the season of difficulties and struggles that will speak words of life and encouragement to people who've gone through similar heartache and see a man who's been sustained by God through a season of trouble. So folks, there are going to be times when you endure. There are going to be times when you go through troubles. And it may be that there are people in your life who need to hear the encouragement of how God has brought you through a season of hardship. So are you ready? Are you open to the Lord to use you to speak words of encouragement into other people's lives? And are you expectant that as you step into that role of encouragement, it may well be that God will use that very ministry of yours to bring encouragement back into your own spirit when you need it. Let's pray. Father, for all that we are going through today, we need your help. We need your wisdom. We do not have enough willpower. We don't have enough smarts. We don't have enough know-how. But Lord, we do trust you. And we pray that in the midst of these trials that we walk through, that your will would be done in our lives, but also that our eyes would be open and our heart would be ready for your spirit to guide us and use us to speak words of encouragement and hope into the lives of other believers who struggle. 
We pray this, Lord, for their benefit. We pray it for our transformation. And we pray it ultimately for your glory. And we pray all these things in the name of our mighty Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We'll be back soon with a benediction. Thanks so much for being part of today's service.